Welcome to Y-Lab, the makerspace located in the basement workshops of the historic David Dunlap Observatory in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada, where the windows open so we can throw an antenna out for testing, but please don't tell anybody we did that. This is Lesson 7B in our Canadian Amateur Radio Training Series. This one involves memorization. Go for 90% on the quiz, which you should be able to achieve after three runs through. Health Canada sets the rules for exposure. And those rules are set in safety code six. These are exposure limits. So how much radiation you're receiving. Okay, remember that it's Health Canada and it's safety code six and it's exposure limits. So for RF energy exposure for all transmitters, and that covers everything, contact currents, induced currents, magnetic, things like that. The greatest risk on the frequencies we transmit are 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. That's the biggest risk range to the human body because you, the meat sack, absorb most energy at that range. Now, some people say, what's the greatest risk above 30 megahertz? Uh, some people will say it's those users who only have their basic license. No, no. The greatest risk from 30 to 300 is because you absorb more energy. Now, it's exposure limits. It does not specify power limits. Okay, so... There can be a lot of power in the system, but what it's emitting for uh, RF energy may vary depending on the type of device. So what's important is the exposure limits, how much you're exposed to. Okay. Now, another funky question in the test is about the risk not decreasing as the frequency drops below 10 megahertz. So greatest risk, 30 to 300. And below 30, as it goes down, the risk doesn't decrease below 10. And then the allowable exposure increases way, way up when you're above 300 megahertz all the way to 1.5. Uh, Next thing we have on emissions is interference. And that's covered by a set of rules called MCAB2. Again, trivial little thing for you to memorize. Now, emissions interference really covers two parts. One is, what is your radio spitting out? And the other one is how the devices that are not your radio, say, in your living room or at your neighbor's house, are affected. Well, those devices at your neighbors or in your house that are not radio have to have a certain level of immunity. That's required and it's part of testing when people go through CSA or whatever else. So here's the deal. If your transmitter is within rules and their device is being interfered with, tough luck. They're supposed to have minimum immunity requirements. But if your transmitter is causing reason, uh, readings at the neighbor's site that exceed the minimums you're allowed to have, then you are responsible. Okay. So the MCAB2 rules are for non-radio receiver equipment that's affected by radio signals. Now, receiver equipment, that's key for the test. Pure transmitters are not covered because they're not receivers in any way. So again, to recap this, you cannot be transmitting uh, interference above a certain limit. And the devices um, that your neighbors have have to be protected at a certain level. That's it. Let's take quiz 7B. It's going to have a few more things in there. Uh, but you'll learn, as always, from our quizzes, if you've done them so far, from the hints and uh, the different tricks in there. So it's memorization, so go for it until you get 90% accuracy, as always, achievable after three passes.
we're YLab at https colon slash slash ylab.ca and all the links to the quizzes and everything else are provided in the comments below. Thank you.